to another episode of Models Workshop. Um, in this episode, I'm going to talk about one of the basic fundamentals of airbrushing, and that is blending. Now, here's the chassis of the Way Serpent that I, it was previously used in the primer video. I went ahead and base coated it white or black. If you notice, there's a few spots that I didn't hit, and the reason is, is those are going to be the hardcore main color versus the black which to me is hot turquoise. Say a little bit of black coming out, there we go. Now I kind of want the tips of the hollow fill generators or whatever those are called to be black, so I'm gonna be careful not to go too far down. Now you're going to reach a point in the blending process where you know that's about where you want to blend. Like I'm going to say right there. Prior to that, we're going to go ahead and have this fully hot turquoise. After that, we're going to worry about blending. So I'm going to go ahead and stop there as far as hitting it full stream. Now, sorry about that, but I had to do had to turn on the uh, compressor. Hopefully, you should still be able to hear me. I'll talk loud. All right. So, as you can see, I've pretty much separated the colors where I want it. I need to add a little bit more. Um, now, it's not going to be done 100% because if you've seen this particular model in several videos, you'll know it's kind of my uh, go-to test piece. So. Surprisingly, if you can look at it, it's been primered over probably a good six or seven times. Um, maybe even more. Now, one of the keys to, uh, to doing the blends is making sure that you have good trigger control. Is you don't want to pull out completely or pull the trigger back completely because at this point you're going to need to be misting now two ways you can do this you can do it straight up and down and not pull the trigger back completely or you can do it at an angle but if you're going to do it at an angle you have to watch what's in your way are there little bumps and stuff in your way? Yeah, there is with this model. So I'm going to go ahead and do it straight up and down. I'm going to hold the brush about six inches off, supply the air, and pull back on the needle just slightly. Laying down thin layers of paint. And then going back to the bottom and adding a little bit more to color match it. It's all about building thin layers of paint. Instead of really heavy, you just build up real thin layers. And you can see, you got a Slight fade. I need to touch it up right around here just a little bit more. Alternately, I could actually go back with a little bit of black and just hit it real quickly.
This is what's useful about an airbrush with one of these. Engage it, figure out exactly where you want your needle pull back to. Right about a little bit more, yeah. And that way you can and you can't really see it, but if you watch you can you'll notice the paint starting to build up. Maybe. If you have a high spot, you can focus on it just for a moment, like the top of that vent. You can focus on it just for a moment and really bring out the, hi the highlight. Now another trick you can do is if you just watched, you can start on one point, start on one point, and then slowly pull away, and you can see it has a really dark, a bright spot right there. In the middle where I started, it's going to be darker and it's going to be a hazier paint around the sides. So, that way you can find points that you want to focus. and really bring out. And the key here, nice low building of layers. You don't want to you don't want to just go and saturate with something because then you're just painting. This is to get nice blends going.
and alternately you can start off heavy on a point and then um, kind of build up like a bottom layer like I did here and then as you finish the layer you pull out or you pull back and you just aim start aiming it up a little bit versus right here start off low here and then as you're moving back you want to move it up as well and you're going to get a nice little gradient blend going on There's several different ways to blend. You know, just doing the, the slowly building the layers, the focusing and pulling out, the focusing on one point, and then working your way up and back, starting off here and working your way up. Um, actually, that was one I didn't cover. Now that I remember, think about it. Basically, you just pick a point, and then slowly build up. And this is where you really need to do a trigger guard or your uh, pullback guard because you're going to hit it at the start and work your way up all the way. And then you're going to hit it again and the next time you're not going to go all the way up. Next time you're going to hit it and you're going to go about like halfway then hit it. And what you're doing is you're building slow layers. And you don't want that, that first pull to be really hardcore. You want it to be very, very light. So what happens is you're going to layer about seven or eight layers right here. So down here it's going to be bright and it's going to be really faded up here. And that really works well with a lot of the washes and inks and everything else that you can get uh, to add like burn effects and stuff like that on different nozzles. Um, if anyone's seen my Cobra, that's actually how I did the uh, burn effect on the muzzle of the Cobra was by starting at the tip and then working back and then and I just basically shortened it every single time that I hit it until eventually it was just at the tip it was almost black versus really light black and brown towards the end and uh the effect turned out really awesome I really liked it now, if you're finding yourself in a problem where you're having too much color come out, you can dilute it with stuff like, uh, with Reducer, Wicked Colors, that stuff right there is a dream. Um, you cut it, and it basically turns your paints transparent versus opaque, and you can actually be a little more liberal with the coats that you put on, and it's going to put more pigment, less pigment down. And this stuff, you can actually cut as much, almost as much as you want, and just keep adding and adding and adding to it. That makes it where your layers are going to build up super, super, super slow. And uh, you're going to be able to do a little bit more. But that's basic fading. You can see this is what I did in about 15 minutes. And this is just showing a whole bunch of different stuff. Um, it can turn out really much more unique and awesome if we'd actually take a little bit more time with it. But 15, 20 minutes. That's the effects. Um, looks nice. You get a nice solid tabletop out of this. Uh, especially once you go through and add some different colors in certain places, uh, color in the gems a little bit more, you know, hit the gems up, deepen them. Make them a more solid color. Um, you work on the fins a little bit more. And also you can go back with black. 
you can go through and if there's some areas that you hit that you didn't mean to you can go in and darken stuff down like right here right there a little bit down through here maybe back here a little ways back there blacken it up a little bit more give you some more shadows um, alternately you can also take your base color add just a little bit of white and I do mean a little bit of white or you can actually go with pure white if you're really good at fading and go through and hit certain areas and really cause them to blast um, hit like right here here maybe the entire edge um, maybe the front edge right here just to really make it glow and pop and everything else and you have to remember you're not going for white you're going for a little bit of white over the blue so the blue still shows through you want the the blue to be 100% visible through the entire thing you don't want it to you don't want it to uh, completely cover you're not going for white you're going for a light blue and you can use regular white for that but anyways thank you for watching hope you really enjoyed this the second time I've done this video today uh, first time it didn't turn out all that well and just to show you a little difference um, these were actually shot with the same color difference being this one was has been misted with primer this one is straight with no shading hot turquoise and that one is actually has the shading kind of pre-shading built into it Then, as you can see, same color, two completely different effects. All right, I hope you've enjoyed. Talk to y'all. Hey, Larry from Models Workshop here. I just want to take a couple seconds to thank you for watching our video. Uh, if you could like it, it's when it looks like this. Leave us a comment down below because that's the only way we're going to improve is if we know what you're liking and what you're not liking. And lastly, there's a button that's about this color. So subscribe, <laughs> click on it. Promise you you're not going to regret that decision. Uh, we've got a lot of Great videos coming up talking about everything from airbrushing to paint brushing. You get to see all the different various models that we're working on. Uh, you can also find us on the web at www.models-workshop.com. You can find us on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash the models workshop. You can find both those links down below. Once again, thank you for watching the video.